I'm making a film now and I am doing it because I need the money. I don't want to admit that in public, but this is what is really happening. I am doing it for the money. It's going to be a big budget film. So of course, I need some working capital and so I am doing it for the money. Yes, but there is also another aspect and I am just doing it because I love it so much. It's like a child, I would push it into a corner. If it wasn't working, I could get into another business that would bring in more money, but I'm just doing it out of sheer pleasure. I think that paradoxically, what makes you a real artist is when you don't need the money. What would be really humiliating for someone like me is to do something just for the money that I would not be able to do it simply because I lack this ultimate passion in doing my job. I don't want to live on the money. I don't want to do something just for the money. Desperate now I make this money than I did prior to the fragmented death of ideology. But I don't care, because it's so much pleasure that I really don't need it. I have a very simple life. What aesthetic, but very simple. You're too modest. I think that you are one of the most productive and most influential contemporary thinkers who are working at this level. Yes, nobody is working as much as you are. You're writing books every year. In between you're making films, and you have all these performances, where you are collaborating with some of the best opera singers to bring opera to the people for free, for no money. I know. It's, it's, so, this is the sad thing. I don't have time to see films or to live my private life. I just work, 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 work. But I tell you something even more embarrassing. In my country, Slovenia, I have critics who claim that I am a great orver because I work so much. They don't consider it as work. They think it's some kind of a masochistic pleasure and also suffering from the other. Plus, if you need to punch yourself because you enjoy too much. So, no, I'm not too modest. It goes in a very different direction. I would say the same about you. Your work is not really understood. You are not really appreciated. Even though your influence is growing. An example, Robert Hughes, who is a very good art critic, is working on a book about the most important artists of our time, and he has written a chapter about you. You should know that. So that's the direction it's going in. Yes, we are not there yet. We are too early. You are asking about the future. I think that maybe my version of materialism will be our centuries version of Kantian idealism. It was very important in the 18th century, it opened up new space for us. But now we can see that it was just a stage. Now we have to move on. The crucial point is this. You are right to treat Derrida and others as being too focused on the death of God. But for me, this is only half the story. It's clear that we had in phenomena like Nazism or Stalinism a palpable experience of how not only God dies, but also humanity itself dies. And I think that Lacan's insight into the foreclosure of the thing, the impossible real, is crucial here. If you ask what the 20th century was, it's the century of Holocaust and of atomic bomb. The basic experience was precisely that of the impossibility of the human. We didn't learn anything from the Holocaust. This is the ultimate insight of Nazism. The basic idea is not let's avoid another Holocaust, but rather what if we could perform an operation which would make people more resolute, more ready to implement it, they are told. One has to be clear about this. I could never direct a film like Ingmar Bergman's The Serpent's Egg, where the characters want to stage the Third Reich all over again a huge swastika flag, and they are going to torture people, and so on. I could never direct that, because for me it is something that is over. The possibility of having another human being incinerated in a crematorium oven is something that is over. It is not going to happen anymore. But apparently not everyone has accepted that as yet. Yes, I think you are right. I also have this sense of a fundamental change but I don't know how to describe it exactly. Do you think that what we have today is a new form of materialism? I think we haven't yet seen what the new form of materialism is, because it has to be invented. 
there is a great vacuum. We're in a vacuum. But I feel that something is beginning. Yes, it's there, but it hasn't crystallized yet. As you know, I draw the distinction between old and new materialism. What is interesting is that old materialism is regaining some of its strength precisely by means of new types of spiritualist excesses. You see it in quantum physics and so on. Even some of the most fundamentalist quantum physicists have to resort to Baudrillard type similar images and so on. Uh, uh, uh. So what happens is that old materialism is the kind of excess which comes back. Yes, it exists, but I think that we are still searching for a new form of materialism that works. I think it's in the filmmaking. It is already there. But we haven't yet been able to define it clearly. There are some first signs. Yes, I somehow have this feeling. This is why I think that even in your films you are the best poetry of materialism. Still, I am more and more struck by how traditionally poetic they are. I remember years ago, I made the first translation of Fitz Karl Bow into Slovene. When we finished the translation, I was up at night going over it, and suddenly I found myself crying. It was amazing, like religious epiphany. But you already knew this, didn't you? I think so, yes. I think it's clear that the poetry is there. It's there even though I can't describe it. You ask me, what is this poetry, and I can't say it. Yes, I know it's there. This is why even the recent films, like Bad Lieutenant and Rascal Bone, are not really Hollywood films. They remain poetic in a very radical sense. I think that we are dealing with real poetry here, not in the sense of a Hollywood film where everything is resolved with happy clover. No, this Poetry is uh, in the sense of something that resists resolution. And I think that in these films there is something which is answering our contemporary void, a metaphysical void. This, I think that in a very elementary way, if not philosophically, then per se, these films are the answer to our time. I like the poems of Rupert Brooke very much, just for example. They strike me as real poetry. Rescue Dawn is one of the most beautiful poems I ever made with a camera. Especially the end is in itself a poem. And it's not necessarily a visible poem. It's a poem that is hidden to some extent, a little bit like poetry of the imagination, like Boswell's Life of Johnson. Yes, Boswell's literary biography is in itself poetry, and it has to be discovered like a jewel. It's very precious. It took great care.